this is the second worst day here at IU North. <clears throat> Yesterday, a Dr. Bannock, B-A-N-N-E-C, wanted to send me home. You know, at that time, I'd only received two treatments of the remdesivir. He said, ah, oh, you don't need it. You're not even short of breath. I said, yes, I am. Then he went on to say, you don't qualify. I must have because um, I've gotten two treatments. And then he further stated, you should just go home right now. And I don't feel comfortable giving you any more narcotics. I was in so much pain from my neck. My neck hurt so bad. I was crushed. He made me feel like I was a drug addict. And he knew I was a physician. I don't take narcotics. I was hurting. So, I spoke to patient advocate who left me wanting. Um, there's not much I can do. So I started asking, send me to another hospital where they can treat me. And if they're not gonna treat me here properly, send me to another hospital. Well, next thing I know, I'm getting a stat. CT of my neck with and without contrast. The CT went down a little bit into my lungs and you could see new pulmonary infiltrates, new uh, lymphadenopathy all throughout my neck. And all of a sudden, yes, we will treat your pain. You have to show proof that you have something wrong with you in order for you to get the medicine. I put forward and I maintain, if I was white, I wouldn't have to go through that. And that man never came back and apologized. This Dr. Banny guy. And then today now, supposed to be getting the narcotics, right? They came in nine o'clock. I've been in pain since seven. And um, when they came in, very, very sympathetic. Uh, yeah, we will get you pain medicine. I don't want to give you IV narcotics. How about PO? Fine. I just want my pain to end. So then he says, well, what pain medicine? I said, I don't know. I don't take them on a regular basis. I don't even write for them. All I know is that I'm in intense pain and morphine worked. Okay, well, we'll give you Percocet. Okay. I don't know nothing about it. I don't think I've ever had it. It was another two and a half hours before I got the pain medicine. The nurse came in. The first thing I said to that nurse was, why did I have to wait for so long? The nurse snapped back. You're not my only patient. I have five other patients, you know. I said, I have been in pain since 7 a.m., you know. Well, I can't be in here every five minutes. I said, no, you were in here once in four hours. What? I was in here an hour and a half to two hours ago. That was once since your shift started at 7. Well, I had other people, and I had to take... Um, uh, the shift change, we had to give report. I am a patient. Are you going to take care of me or not? 
and he went in. Now, that is not how you treat patients. Period. So, I don't trust this hospital, and I'm asking to be transferred. These people wanted to send me home with new pulmonary infiltrates and all kind of lymphadenopathy in my neck. The other thing that that white Dr. Bannock said was that if I stayed, that he would send me home Saturday at 10 p.m., in the dark. Who does that? On a week, who does that? And that nurse was telling me, oh, I was marching in Black Lives Matter. I told him, no, I don't believe none of that. Not one bit, not one iota. He wouldn't even know how to march. Probably can't even spell it. This is how black people get killed. When you send them home and they don't know how to fight for themselves. I had to talk to somebody, maybe the media, somebody, to let people know how I'm being treated up in this place. And he gladly told me, I know you're a doctor. But he didn't want the black doctor to have no medicine, nothing. And then had the nerve to say it's because of him, the nurse, that I got the medicine. Really? Because of you? No. How about because I had that stat CT in my neck where it showed all of that lymphadenopathy and, and infiltrates? Yeah, you didn't know about that? You didn't get that in report? That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To being black up in here, this is what happens.